Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk you through some scenarios where we can explore how to actually set up and some of the reasons why from a Power BI premium per user perspective or premium capacity, not including Fabric, but within the Power BI universe, why we might want to use uh, deployment pipelines with workspaces and some of the features and automations that they actually help out a lot with when you leverage them between deploying from development, test and production workspace scenarios. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So what I have in front of us is a Power BI premium per user workspace. Now the scenarios that I'm walking you through with deployment pipelines, those are leveraged or can be leveraged with either Fabric Capacity or Power BI premium per user or premium capacity. Now the items that I have in this workspace is I have some data flows to collect data. This is a linked data flow from another workspace. I have a report and two models, one with a linked data flow and the other with the original data flow that is in the other workspace itself. Now, what I want to lay out is an idea of exactly why we might want to use deployment pipelines. So I have one workspace now, and to avoid having a whole bunch of dev, test, and prod items all in the same workspace, it would be useful to have a development workspace, test workspace, and production workspace, but also some complexities that can come into play between a single model with a linked report or a thin report, and also those data flows to make sure that they can easily migrate between all of these different experiences. So what I want to start with to show you is that I already have for two scenarios, I'm going to walk us through the deployment pipelines of this, both from a perspective of a model that is using a local linked data flow here that's connected from another workspace or using the original data flow in another workspace too, and just to show you how seamless and easy it is to actually deploy all of these things with three workspaces, but only really needing to have one copy locally of these files saved to SharePoint or anything else. So in this case, let me show you the other deployment pipeline that I have here. Go up to deployment pipelines. So I already have one for my core data flows, which has three data flows between all three of these, which is my dev data flow, my test and my prod. So three separate data flows in these three contained workspaces managed from the deployment pipeline. Now, what I would like to do is for Contoso here, I would like to create a deployment pipeline. Better said, come over to my Contoso workspace. There we are. So I would like to be able to separate this into a dev, a test, and a prod, and make sure that as I publish these, it moves my local items, such as my linked data flow here, my report file, my model files, but also there's various connections that these all have locally or to other workspaces. And we want to make sure where, there's, where those are going to be getting managed uh, from and getting migrated to. So let's just take a look here in this workspace for now and come up to the lineage view just so we can see where everything is currently being mapped. Right now I have a report that is connected to this local model in this workspace which is connected to a data flow in this workspace as well, which is originally getting its data from a dev data flow in another workspace. So that's the lineage for that one. And here's the original semantic model also that is grabbing information from the SharePoint here and also SQL Server. So we can see a few other rules that we can set up when we publish this. So I'm gonna go to deployment pipelines. I'm gonna create a new pipeline for Contoso. There we are. Select next. Now I'm going to just keep it the traditional dev test prod. So those will be the three pipelines that I will build. Select create. And I'm going to start by assigning Contoso here to the first deployment pipeline, because that's going to be my dev environment. Everything's connected to dev. And by the way, with all of the files that I build out too, as you'll see, Usually the only files that you want saved are the dev copies because all the rest of it, the files getting moved and connections being changed to test and prod, that's managed through the deployment pipelines and the service. So I have that here and I don't have a test or prod workspace yet, but I do want to migrate everything that I have in this workspace over to that. So I'm going to select test. I'm going to select all of the items to move and deploy, deploy from development, and it's going to deploy to test. Now, if I select deploy here, it's going to create a new workspace for me. So let's watch this. I'll select deploy. Everything is going to come in through this. I can add a note if I'd like to. So first deployment. There we are. 
select deploy. And you can see that it created a Contoso. And then in uh, parentheses, square parentheses, test is the word that's applied here now. So it's deploying the content, moving that over into here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go and check the lineage of this. So let's let it finish deploying, moving the items. There we go. We got the model. We got the data flow that's in here. Both the models have come through. And I want you to see what just happened automatically. One of the nice things about this is the automation uh, that this does without needing to intervene too much. So we're going to go to that new workspace, Contoso Test. Let's take a look at the lineage view over here in the upper right. So now in the Contoso Test workspace, I have the report connected to the local model in test. So the model and report, separate files, moved over together. The linked data flow also is migrated. And notice that the source of the data for said linked data flow is now also pointing to the data flows test. And even for that other model that was directly connected to that other workspace's data flow, as long as that was in a deployment pipeline that, will, um, that follows a similar pattern of dev, test, and prod, it will know, hey, if you're going from dev to test, we should also change your connection to the data flow from those dev to the test environments as well. So I didn't have to make any adjustments for that. That moved automatically for me. Now, if I come back to the deployment pipeline, I'm going to go to my Contoso. Now, if I needed to make modifications to any other rules, I do have the option here for deployment rules. So I can set these up. And on any of these three, I can make changes. So the data flow has options here. And I can come down to the model original data flow in this case. And I would like to go to data source rules. And there are a couple of sources that I have in here. So I'm going to add a rule. And as an example, I have two things in here. I have a SharePoint URL and I have a database URL. So if you have an, any kind of a connection string for any sources that you have that have discrete separate dev, test, and product environments for the data, this is where you can change it from and to. Now, once you add a rule, I'm just going from the same server to same server because I don't have multiple ones in my demo environment. But once you save this, what you would then want to do is redeploy because those rules don't get applied until the next deployment where it will override those in the model after deployment. So in this case, I made a new rule for specifically the model data flow. So I'm going to go from here, uh, better said to this one, I'm going to select this and I will redeploy now that I have that new rule that needs to be implemented. So that's going to be moved to this environment. But very easy to do that and automate that. So uh, just because I've seen so many clients who ended up forgetting a data source connection or something else, and the deployment pipelines handles that so seamlessly when it comes to the lineage and just moving items together that should be between environment to environment. Now, just to go ahead and uh, I'd say clean up a little bit, this original workspace, I do want to change to Contoso Dev just to keep the names consistent. There we are. All right. So now we got Dev, we got Test, and we're going to make the last one as well here too. So come back to Deployment Pipelines, Contoso. And then we're going to go to the test environment. I'm going to select all of these, deploy, and again, without a name, we'll automatically move it to production, create a new workspace for me, and we'll select deploy there. It's going to take them. It's going to move it over to the prod workspace as well. And we will once again check the lineage to see if this moves over with it, which it should. Let's let all the content copy over. Um, there we are for test, and it should. Ah, yes, so we want to do this, uh, deploy to prod. Sorry, one more time. So we'll go ahead and do that, copying the content from test over to production. You can see the items populating one at a time as they show up in here. And there we are. We've now moved those, created the new production workspace as well. And again, if you needed to make any rule changes on top of what is done automatically with data flows and other linked items, you can come into here and make those adjustments either for parameters or anything else. Um, just to give you another example, if I was to come up to parameter rules, I do have a rule where in this case, I have a relative year parameter. That's just a date filter on how many years that I want to bring in from today backwards. I can make adjustments for that as well. So basic filters to actually open up the range of data that you're importing, depending on your dev test and production scenarios, you can also make changes for that here. But Let's just go ahead, go to the production workspace. And again, let's check the lineage to see where everything is connected. I have my prod report connected to the model locally in prod. 
which is connected to this linked data flow in prod and connected downstream to the prod data flow workspace for that one. And same with all the other items here. So again, it just makes it very seamless and easy to use these. And just to put my file folder up here, because of this scenario with the deployment pipelines, I now only need one master report file in this case, or one master file per item because it's migrated between those. So you don't have to separately maintain files for your models that go between your dev, test, and prod, or your reports, or anything else that would be local otherwise, depending on if you're using PBX files, Power BI project files, or anything of that sort. But from a Power BI perspective, I think this really simplifies things and is one of uh, my favorite features of the experiences in the service to really upgrade to those enterprise features. And again, the requirement for this is some type of capacity or premium per user is required. So under license info here, you go over to edit. And as long as again, you have the premium per user capacity, some licenses for embedded fabric or trial. So anything essentially other than pro will give you the options for this. But overall, I do hope that this explanation did help to explain a little bit of some of the added benefits that come from deployment pipelines, and especially how easy they can actually be to use when it comes to moving items between these three workspaces. And with the version history that's built in to be able to see what changes were done, there's a lot of really nice features that come built into this. But my biggest one really and showcase for this is to show how easy the items stay linked and move with each other between environments without uh, and also making it hard to kind of mess things up, so to speak. So this tool does help to automate a lot of those headaches. But otherwise, drop any comments or suggestions down in the comments section below, as well as any suggestions for a future video. Check out some of my related content here in the upper left. And as always, liking, commenting, and subscribing helps the channel grow. So I will see you in my next video.